It's Chuck Norris Friday. Chuck Norris, Norris Friday. Fridays. Chuck Norris house has no doors, only walls that he walks through. <laughs> if you ask Chuck Norris what time it is, he will always answer. He, oh, I gotta try that again. It's not funny. It's not funny when you stutter. <laughs> Okay. If you ask Chuck Norris what time it is, he always answers two seconds till. After you ask two seconds till what, he roundhouse kicks you to in the face. <laughs> it's always uh, Chuck Norris can believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old commercial. Pluto is actually an orbiting group of British soldiers from the American Revolution who entered space after Chuck Norris gave them a roundhouse kick to the face. <laughs> That was like mine last week. We're so long, though. <laughs> Running out. Uh, Chuck Norris can divide by zero. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. We're going to do a morning scripture. We're going to pray every day. Welcome. Good to see y'all. Don't forget, if you're a new subscriber, type it down in there where you're from and uh, your name. We like to mention that on Wednesday, but also yeah. like, share, and subscribe right yeah. now. Yeah, today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. We're talking about your message this last weekend where you really shared about the, the idea that I, I, can, I could live an un unoffendable life. Right. A life where I don't pick up little offenses along the way because... What happens when I pick up all these little offenses? What does it do to me? It weighs you down. It, yeah. it, it, makes, it makes it hard for you to be the loving, caring person that you are. It makes it hard for you to have grace, to have mercy, to encourage others, to build other people up. And it just makes life heavy. Like you, you, you're like, okay, why are all of a sudden life seems so hard? Yeah. Why does it seem like I'm dragging in the morning? Why you, does know, it seem you, never like see, you never see like Peter going up to Jesus and like, hey, you okay? He's like, well, <laughs> just I was in treat some, like I did some of my greatest work. You have great stuff. And, you know, nobody likes me. I saw, and this one guy, he was just really, anyways, I just got a lot on my mind right now. <laughs> you never see, because you know, that, would, that's, that would be weird for I us to see Jesus that place, way. I go to place to place, I heal, no, I never get a thank you, not one thank you. <laughs> 5,000 people get food, not even a letter, even, not one letter. What about the day where they all start yelling, crucify him, crucify him, and he'd be like looking out in the car, and like, I healed you of leprosy. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta be joking me. You're kidding me. <laughs> And but, so we're not designed. But he didn't pick it up. We were not. And so people wronged Jesus, but he didn't pick it up. He nope. lived a life of dropping it. And you cannot maintain a life of happiness mm. when you allow yourself to be offended. Every offense gives you, like, it just takes you, right? And so we want to live a life that's unoffendable. And the thing is, too, is that not only was Jesus never offended, but he also wasn't like a doormat. Like he was, no. he was willing to go to somebody and say, hey, listen, you Pharisee, right. like you snake in the grass, why are you coming at me right now? Right. Um, he was willing to address people sometimes when they needed to be addressed. Because we're not doormats. No. Well, not, not whatsoever, but the problem is, is... But he loved people. Yeah, he didn't take all that and carry all that baggage, but instead he just lived a life of trumpet. I, I may have... Some, and I said this in the sermon, you always have a choice when somebody gives you an offense. So the, this is my offense. If they, they do something that... You know, offense happens. But whether or not I receive it or take it, that's a decision. So you did, Jason did this to me, maybe? And I just, I have a choice. Either I go to him and go, hey, when you do this, mm -hmm. I don't like it. Now he may go, whatever, and then I still drop it. Or I just decide I'm not going to talk to him, I still drop it. Either way, I drop it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Jesus talking about how he's going to die and then, you know, going to be persecuted and how he's going to die. And then three days he's going to rise from the dead. And, and Peter goes, no, oh, that'll never happen to you, Lord. I'll never let that happen. And <laughs> what does a... Jesus do? Jesus goes, uh, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. For you Satan. do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Right. But, you know, he didn't discard Peter's relationship. Didn't he, he call didn't him fire Simon Bar-Jonah? <laughs> Whenever he's mad at, at he Peter. He always called him their old name. <laughs> like Peter's, always made me laugh. Peter's fishing and Jesus is resurrected from the dead, by the way. <laughs> like it's a pretty big time. And, <laughs> and, and Peter goes fishing. It's a, he's, <laughs> Love that. Jesus renamed him Peter, but his old name was Simon. And Jesus goes, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Son of Jonah. Oh, clip! Uh, let's roll this clip from this weekend and let's talk about it. This is this was a great. Oh, you know what? I'll make him another meal. Maybe that's what. Maybe he's still upset about the birthday thing. Makes a deal, and then six o'clock at night he calls and he's like, "Hey, uh, I gotta stay late for work." And she's like, "Really? You call at six? You're supposed to be home at six. He's like, "Hey, I'm trying to do. You know, I'm. It's not like I'm having fun. I'm not out with the guys. I'm working, right?" So he's getting a little upset because her attitude. Like, I'm trying to work. She's upset because he ain't coming home for a meal, right? By the time he gets home, right, food is cold. She's She's upset, she's mad, he grabs his food, goes in the other room, goes to eat it, and they go to bed again. And you see 
right, as baggage in just a couple days. Now, things that you used to enjoy about each other when you were dating now greatly annoy you. Right, because that smoldering fire go. Right, you used to think you're like, oh my God, we go on a date. She's, I just love. She just, she, she talks. It's so easy to listen to her. She just talks. Part. Right now, you're married nine years. You're like, she won't shut up. She just won't. She won't ever just be quiet. <laughs> no, this next person. She's all, you know. I, she's telling her friends when they're dating. He's got a boyish charm about him. You know, he gets a little food on his, his face, and when he eats, sometimes with it open, it's so cute. And now you're eight years in the marriage. You're like, okay, when I watch you eat, I want to throw up every time you chew. It's like a big horse just chewing. Do you do you even know? Have you ever looked at yourself? Have you ever looked at yourself? <laughs> that hit me so hard because uh, I felt like maybe this was a very real conversation. Like, <laughs> this is me and Holly. Like, you know what I mean? Like I was like, this is really accurate. I almost felt like you were in my first seven years of marriage. That could have been a recorded conversation, like literally in, from my. And I'm being very transparent right I now. I think that's what it is. Because my wife people. and I, we did carry around a lot of things, right. and we and we had to make a decision between the two of us that from now on. You know, no more going to bed mad. Yes. No more carrying around things. If I'm mad, let's just bring it up and be done with it. And didn't you find something dramatically happened in your relationship? Oh my gosh, what a change! And now, when I, when either of us are moody, we recognize, okay, there's a need happening here. Like right. I'll get home and I'll see her, like, you know, or she recognizes, you know, blam, slam, and I come home <laughs> or whatever. I'm just a little off, and it's like, hey, is everything all right? And now we're sharing. Right. It's different, isn't it? And, and you're so, just able to. I'm do not it. saying everything's perfect because I've got the greatest marriage in the world. Like we're very relatable. We're very normal people uh, but you you learn some of these concepts right. and they can really Holly, change we, your relationship we battle, but we're quick to drop the bags yeah we don't take the bags till tomorrow and, and i do think i actually have the greatest marriage in the world i have to correct myself i'd love i love right. my marriage. I okay, but i know i don't but i do think i do uh matthew chapter uh six and verse nine through 13 jesus talking you know the disciple said can you teach us how to pray right this is the lord's prayer he said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants what's happening in heaven to be like on right. earth. That there be no sickness, so you want to struggle no sadness. Down yep. No, he wants it to be great. Right. Give us this day our daily bread. He's talking about giving me a little Bible every day. Like yeah, I need man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But also means supply all my needs according to your glory. Verse 12, boom, he brings us out. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive Forgive those who have wronged. Let, forgive, forgive me for wronging you, and let me forgive others right. for wronging me. Because forgiveness isn't something that comes to us, but it's supposed to flow through us. Wow, I love that. It's supposed to. It's a flow. Yeah. So I get all of this forgiven, but then I'm supposed to be forgiven out here. Yeah. I gotta have that grace and that mercy when people do wrong you. People are gonna wrong you today. You today? know, you today, oh. all day today. There are gonna be people. You know what I found is people are annoying. Yeah, uh, okay. There are, and I'm, and I'm probably annoying too. <laughs> You're not. I've and never... I actually, I'll tell the kid, when I, I pulled out uh, yesterday, I pulled out, you know, and I went, uh, you know how you pull out and you go, oh, okay, I should have waited. Right? I should have waited. It wasn't <laughs> that good. was a mistake. And that car behind has to. And then you I can't go, even send him an email or a text. No. You don't know that. You can't write a no, note. No, I, I just got. should have an I'm sorry. Like, you can flip a switch and like something in your <laughs> review, you, you know, your back window appears. It goes, I'm so sorry. I, that was dumb. Yeah, I'm better than that. <laughs> and I told, and the guy didn't even honk or anything. He just kind of took it. And oh, I went, he was so and I nice. went, he's better. He's, he's better, better than, than I am. Yeah. I said, you know what? Because I was wrong. Yeah. You I wronged him. He didn't let it get him unhappy at like, all. It was like Judah and Tamar. You are more righteous than I am. <laughs> I'm right? I love it. And it must have been seven minutes later, somebody gets in front of me, and I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> You're already mad. But Jesus was saying, like, every time you pray, right? right. And, and, and uh, remind we yourself. We pray a lot. So he, what was he saying? He was like, you should be forgiving Every daily. time. Daily. Every time. Jesus. We don't forgive six every six months when we go to that forgiveness church service. What is the first thing Jesus does in the midst of the biggest hurt, the biggest uh, backstabbing of his life on the cross? He says, he begins to pray. He says, Father, forgive them. Yeah. They know not what they do. And I think we would all have said something different had it been us up there. I Father, get them. Get them all. Burn them. I'd have been like uh, the prophets where he's like uh, calling down fire or something. <laughs> get them all, God. If I'm a man of God, because remember they said, if you're a man of God, why don't you get down off that cross? But if I'm a man of God, God may fire fall from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. That's what the prophet said. Right. <laughs> Done. But not Jesus. He goes, ah, forgive him. Forgive him. 
And that's a great picture for you and I, um, is just to live a life. And somebody out there, and we want to pray with you today, you've been carrying bags for many years. You've been holding on to that stuff, and today we want you just to drop it, mm. right? Just to drop it. And this is a message that, like, even in a week from now, you're like, I still got some bags. Watch it again. Mm -hmm. Watch it again. Faith cometh by hearing. And you find yourself dropping bags, dropping bags, until you feel like your old self. That self that was loving and caring. That self that, 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 that could encourage people and build people up. You've been carrying this stuff on too long. And we need to just drop it. Just let it go. And as we pray right now, see yourself just Dropping the bags. And, and here's the secret. It's when you pray for someone else. Right. I'll, that's that's harmed you. Uh -huh. Right? When you take it and you put it in your prayer. Like Jesus said, pray for those who persecute you. Right? right. Because it does something crazy when you're praying. Because you knew when you pray for someone, you're not praying a wrong. You're not like, God, get them. It's not that kind of prayer. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you start praying for someone else to win who's been mean to you, what that does in eternity, what that does in the heavenlies and the glory that it what releases it into here. your life. Right. Ridiculous. That's, and no, I, I agree. And that's one of the things that God gave me, oh, I don't know, 28 years ago when I felt like I was greatly wronged and he had me start praying for this person. And I didn't want to. I hated it. I mm -hmm. hated it. But, you know, I prayed for a period of time. I think it was maybe almost two, three weeks. And by, the, by about three weeks, I could pray and I... When I prayed, I wanted it to happen. Aww. And at that moment, I yeah. knew... Your heart had changed. I forgave him. Yeah. And there was a heaviness that was released. Yeah. And, and you, you persevered. Thing. You stayed with it. No, I say pray for him every day. Mm -hmm. And the first week is hard. Yeah, sometimes I say you might have to forgive him again tomorrow. Have you ever done that? <laughs> yes. Like, it was pretty bad. Like, it went back a lot of years, and it right. was pretty huge, and it was harmful, and it was tragic. And then you forgive them that in that church service or today you're listening to this and, you, and <clears throat> just let you know. And you might in that moment have let it go. But it's weird how the next day or it a comes. week later you go, oh, uh oh, I got to drop it again. <laughs> right. And you hit it. Yeah. You See, when you drop it, then, then when I talked about this in the sermon is don't pick it up. Yeah. What, what does that mean? In my thoughts. I don't talk to people about it. Mm. I don't let my mind think about it. I make my mind think about something else. I drop it and I keep it dropped. Yeah. But I think the power of praying for that person allows us to cycle through and get to the place where we can actually pray and mean it. We're like, mm -hmm. I do want them to have a good day today. Yeah. And at that moment, you're like, okay. And there's glory coming to you when you when you do those kinds of things. That's glory released into your life. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you help us drop it and keep it dropped. Those things, those bags, those annoyances, those offenses, Lord, we just let them go right now. Those times where we've said, well, I've been hurt in this way, and that's why I do this. And I've been hurt in this way, and that's why I do that. But Lord, we're not going to let hurts change our character anymore or control us or tell us what to do. But instead, we're letting those hurts go so that we can live as you created us to live in the character that you created us to live in. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this clip. You and I got to learn to Snoop Dogg it. Drop it like it's hot out there. Come on. Drop it like it's hot. Because you weren't designed to carry this stuff. You weren't designed to carry that hurt and that pain. You know, that being offended is, or an offense, I'm sorry, when somebody does something offensive is an event. It happened. Holding on to it is a decision. People hurt us all the time. They do dumb things. It's an event. It happens. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen tomorrow. People do that. Whether or not I hold on to it is a decision. And when we hold on to it, it makes life harder, it makes it unbearable. We end up getting more and more angry. If we can learn to just, I don't have to hold it. And as I drop it, I set the prisoner free. And what you realize as you drop those off is the prisoner was you. You were the one that was a prisoner to that offense. You were the one that had to carry it all the way everywhere you go. They, they're not carrying anything. They're the offense. They're just going off with their life. And you even get more offended at that. Look at them going off with their life. They talk bad about me and, and backstab me. And now look at how great things are for them. And I got to carry all of this. And Jesus says, you weren't designed. Don't even go to the altar until you've taken care of it. It's that important that you drop it quickly. Get rid of it. You know, when you think about it, God dropped everything. When you got saved, he dropped all of your sins in a moment. Boom. Every sin you've ever done, he dropped it. He dropped it. Even things you do today, after you, he drops it. Always dropping everything that you do. And you know, forgiveness is not something that's supposed to just flow to you. It's supposed to flow through you. 
Come on. It doesn't just flow and stop, but instead it flows through me into every person, every relationship that I have. I've been given forgiven so I can forgive. I've been given grace so I can give grace. I've been given mercy so that I can give mercy. It only hurts you. It just holds you. You know, forgiveness doesn't change your past. It releases you into your future. Doesn't, doesn't change. Didn't change anything. Doesn't even change the person. And I want you to know this, that reconcile or reconciliation, I think they put this on the board, um, doesn't always happen. People do some really bad things, doesn't mean that you have to be their best friend again. So it's not always about rec reconciliation. Sometimes we're mad at people that aren't even around. They're dead. They're, they're way gone. We're still mad at some people. So there's no way to reconcile. But release is always an option. Can't reconcile. I guess we'll never be best friends again. Maybe, you know, you're divorced and you're not going to be married again. That's all right. But I don't have to hate you. I, I, don't, I don't have to carry this baggage of, of the 15 years, the, the 12 years that we had. I can just release. And now that thing that was carried into my next relationship, I'm no longer being hindered. Because isn't that what we do oftentimes? We take the same hurts from that relationship and we carry them into the new relationship. And the new people get punished because of the sins of the old people. But instead, I say, you know what? I'm going to release it. I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'm not going to be in, in the, the hell of Gehenna in the smoldering fires. And I think there's some people here today, you're mad at it. You know, because it works not just on, you know, I did a couple because that's the easiest one for us to see, but it's friendships. Well, they posted something and it offended you. They, a bunch of people went out and you weren't invited. And they weren't bad people. You never thought that way. I mean, you think they, they thought, uh, forgot about you on purpose, but they just sometimes, you've forgotten people too. We do that sometimes. Now I got offended. And I'm carrying this offense for a family member. I, I'm offended because of their political party, so we can't even get together on Thanksgiving, which is just unbelievable to me. Are you kidding me? And now, just, just act like you're the other political party. If it gets people together, what does it matter? I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to allow the enemy to divide any relationships in my life. People are more important than my opinion. I mean, I have to change it. Right? I just don't post my po politics on social media. Why is that? Because I make half of you mad. That's just the way that it is. And I want to continue to be able to speak into people's worlds. So that's all right. I don't mind. That's not that important to me. What's important to me is building people up and changing lives. What's important to you? Division? Come on, somebody in this house. Or together. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, be in church this yeah, weekend. Be in church. And we have uh, Gospel According to Scrooge. Gospel it's a, it's a Christmas Scrooge. play. Right? Yeah. I, and I love it. It's well done, too. It's oh, not... my God. Remember the Bill Murray one? That's one of my favorite oh my ones. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Did he staple? <laughs> we both thought the same thing. He was stapling <laughs> antlers. We to... <laughs> can't get the antlers to stick to the mice. He's like, wait, have you tried a staple gun? <laughs> The oh guy's like, is he serious? <laughs> he's, Bill Murray was just so, he's, just, he's a classic. No, Groundhog Day. Groundhog, yeah, never drive must. angry. If you're watching never this, you have to angry. watch Groundhog Day tonight. Like, it's a must. Everyone has to watch it I tonight. I met somebody the other day that never has seen Groundhog Day. And well, I'm like, then watch it. Then you watch it now. Oh. You don't waste any time. One of the time. greatest all-time movies. Ted? Ted <laughs> Ryerson? <laughs> that guy. Watch out for that first step. It's a, it's a doozy. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the God. I'm a God. I cannot be killed. I cannot be killed. Maybe he's just been around so long that he knows everything. It's so bad. He, he went the wrong way in the beginning. He's like, he just lived the worst day. Yeah. Because there was no consequences. But he learns to live the best day. It's a very good, like, oh my, oh my gosh. That's such a great way. He catches that kid. No, my favorite part. He, he catches the kid. He goes, I catch you every day. And not thank one you. time, one thank you. Say thank you. Say thank, yes, thank, thank you. You never say thank you. <laughs> Oh, it's the guy from the motor club. <laughs> <laughs> and then he plays the piano, though. I like that he learned the piano. Yeah. He's like, hey. Da, 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 da. No, you have to watch it you just, if right. you haven't seen it. I don't know why. I, I'm going to watch it tonight. I think I'm going to throw yeah. it on. I don't yeah. know if uh, Savvy's ever seen it. Oh, such a good movie. It's a, kind of a Christmas movie, it too. It feels like Christmas, but it's not. But it feels very Christmassy. Because it's in the snow. Yeah. Oh, but I guess it's in the spring. No, it's Groundhog Day. Which is in the spring, Not right? near Christmas, but yeah, it's it in feels Christmassy. We always watch it at Christmas time. What's the, what's the groundhog's name? Oh, uh... Punk Satori! Okay. Punk Sony Phil! We have to take, we have to do more. Oh, more! We gotta go more!
Punk Satori. Okay. Phil. Punk Satori Phil. Well, all right, bye. Yeah. Don't drive angry.